has been won by Aston Villa. Howard Wilkinson congratulates Brian Little and Sava Milosevic, Dwight York are amongst the scorers. Steve Staunton didn't get on in the end as a substitute. Ian Taylor, the other scorer. And Villa comfortable in the end, well-deserved winners after a classic Wembley Cup final performance. They dominated almost from beginning to end. Leeds had that little spell when Brian Dean came on at the start of the second half. But frankly, there was only ever going to be one winner, particularly from the moment after 20 minutes when Sava Milosevic put that howitzer into the back of the Leeds United net. Well, big Ugo Ekiog. And let's go down and have a word with Ian Taylor. Ian, congratulations. First of all, I mean, Aston Villa played so well this afternoon. Yeah, we've been striving for it all season. I think um, we've played well all season and this is just uh, the icing on the cake, but we've still got, um, you know, we've still got a couple of games to go as well. Yeah, we'll just concentrate on this one because you're the winners of the Coca-Cola Cup. Uh, let's deal with your goal first of all. Uh, the first two goals were really excellent. What about your goal? I can't remember much about it really. I, I just remember it coming out to me and I've just lashed it with my left foot. And, uh, you know, it's not my good foot, but uh, I thought I'd have a go. And it's just gone in the corner. Now, two years ago, we can reveal you were an Aston Villa supporter, really, because you were watching uh, the cup final when they beat uh, the, the Coca Cola Cup final when they beat Manchester United from the stands here. Yeah, that's right. I'm a, I've been a Villa fan all my life and. Uh, you know, I was playing for Port Vale at the time and uh, I thought I'd come to Wembley and watch the boys. But to be playing now and uh, scoring the goal as well, it's phenomenal. Oh, what about the first goal? What a strike that was. Let's have your version yeah. first, Ian. Savo, he took a bit of stick, but it's a great finish. He's got a great left foot and he's deserved it. He's, he's kept battling on and uh, icing on the cake for him. Well, you have taken criticism, Savo, but it was a great goal. Yeah, I think so. I mean, great game. We played tremendous tonight. We deserve to win. And what a crunch, contrast for you for all the problems you've had at home. Sorry. All the, con all the problems you've had back at home. It's good for you today. Yeah, great goal for me. I'm very happy. Very happy. <laughs> Quick word from you as uh, Gary McAllister goes up there. Yeah. Um, we scored. Took you a long while. <laughs> I know. It's just the result, really. We needed to win, actually. Uh, it's been a tremendous season for us all season. And it would have been hard for us not to come here and, and get beat today. OK, thank you, Brian. Well, the Leeds United players, it's the tradition here for the Coca-Cola Cup final is that the losers go up first. Yeber gets his losers medal from uh, Virginia Bottomley. Guest of honour today. There isn't much she can say to them and there isn't much they want to say either, to be honest. They battled hard enough. That's a bit of a cliche, of course, but they were. They probably know better than anybody that they were well beaten on the day, and there's no doubting that. Villa took their goals superbly, but overall their team pattern was excellent. As John Barnes was saying at half time, they attack as a team and they defend as a team, and there hardly seemed to be a weakness anywhere. The 11 perfect heroes out there wearing Aston Villa shirts today. So they've equaled Liverpool's record of five victories in this tournament. The money generated uh, by this cup run runs into millions. And now, of course, as I say, there's the big money spinning prospect of a place in the UEFA Cup for Aston Villa next season. As Andy Townsend goes up. Well, he's covered just about every blade of grass at Wembley this afternoon. Why not those 39 so steps that take him up to the Royal Box now? A great captain who's done a terrific job. And at the end, a worthy result, a victory. It's a heavy cup, but he's strong enough to take it. A sight for all Villa fans.
Doug Ellis, the uh, Villa chairman, in the cap there. Mark Bosnich, who's handling right through the afternoon was first class. Paul McGrath, who they tell you has probably been their best defender, particularly over the last few weeks. Never put a foot wrong. Man who scored the second goal. Mark Draper, who made those fantastic runs from the midfield, where Villa really dominated. And Gareth Southgate, so cool and dependable at the back. Alan Wright and Gary Charles, the two full-backs who went bombing down the wings. And here's the man, just 22 years old, who's taken so much stick and has faced it all with a smile and still gone on chasing the ball. But his just rewards today with that opening goal, which was... Absolutely superb. Dwight York has been scoring all season and has saved a special one for Wembley as well. The substitutes come on as well. Young Michael Oakes, the reserve goalkeeper, and Tommy Johnson and Steve Staunton too. Let's have a word with Andy Townsend, the man of the match. Congratu congratulations, Andy. You deserve the man of the match. You personally played well and so did the team this afternoon. What was your view of it? Well, I'm not sure about me winning this, Gary, to be honest. Well, you but, had a great uh, game, Andy. Uh, the team just played very well. You know, we were up, really up for this match, very relaxed. You know, and uh, full credit to the lads because we, we played well all season. And, you know, we sort of just slipped away in the, in the league last few weeks. And there's always a danger the whole thing can fizzle out. But credit to the boys, they kept at it and deserved it today. Now, let's deal with Milosevic, who's taken a lot of criticism. But all you guys have stuck with him and he's scored a terrific, important first goal. Well, because, you know, he's an, I've said all along, he's a bit of an easy target. You know, he's a young lad, he doesn't speak the language very well. He's an easy one to... Uh, look at that. How about that? That's yeah, that's the go. Um, you know, but he's played his part today. Fabulous goal. Funnily enough, we all had a feeling he would do that today. Um, absolutely chuffed for him. Now, finally, what has been the big difference with Villa from last season to this season? Well, I just think confidence, Gary. You know, we've obviously got different players. Confidence, and uh, we're just, you know, on a bit of a roll. Thanks, Andy. Well done. Nothing without control. Pirelli P6000. Remember, it doesn't last forever. Air Canada's executive first sleeper seat is so comfortable that I can do my impression of a couch potato. Air Canada. It's a breath of fresh air. Leonines? For many years, there was just one voice when it came to telephones. Number, please. Trying to connect you. But times have changed. There are now dozens of new phone companies, and at BT, we've been improving services and lowering prices, so much so that every month, customers who left us are now coming back in their thousands. We're glad you decided to come back. Over the next few weeks, we'll be giving those customers the chance to tell you why. We, we can buy to British Telecom to get a quality service from them. I've noticed that the prices have started to drop and uh, they're considerably lower. And we've set up a special helpline on free phone 0800 444 123. I just prefer the quarterly bills. And then I went on to friends and family and I, I really enjoyed that. If you'd like to come back, just ring our helpline right now. I'll try to get you reconnected straight away. It's good to talk. Men say they're not bothered how their hair feels. But he tried new Pantem Pro-V, because I asked him to. At least I could do. It's been reformulated to make hair feel healthy and strong. And it seems to have worked. Yep. 
Yeah. New Pantene Pro V for hair that feels as healthy as it looks. Technology for the next millennium. The Vector from Vauxhall. Brandon Lee stars in the all-action movie premiere. Are you having a bad day or what? Rapid Fire, next Saturday. Welcome back to Wembley Stadium, some 10 minutes after Aston Villa have won the Coca-Cola Cup final, deservedly 3-0 winners against Leeds United. Let's hear from the Villa manager, Brian Little. He's with Gary Newbold. Brian, congratulations, you're having a marvellous season, but this is, uh, at last, some actual success for you. Yeah, delighted. I mean, uh, couldn't really have gone any better, I don't think. Uh, we actually got frustrated the last 15 minutes because we had a spell where we thought we could have gone three up and the game would have been finished, but it's been a, a great day out, and it is a day out when you win here at Wembley, so uh, we're all delighted. You deserve to win today as well. Yeah, I mean, we stepped it up second half. They, they started the first five minutes brightly, but then we became the better side and, uh, and won comfortably in the end. Well done, Brian. Yes, indeed, well done, Brian. Well done, Villa, and very deserving winners, John Barnes, weren't they? Played excellently today, very well. A bit disappointed in Leeds, but Villa thoroughly deserved their victory. Yeah, well, you were both right. I was the one that was wrong. I had a sneaky suspicion for Leeds. You're a goalkeeper, but... Bob. Yeah. You're a goalkeeper. I know. Well, it just shows you don't believe goalkeepers. Let's have a look at the Ian Taylor goal. Um, there was a question mark, I guess, about my old pal Luke here on the cross, John Lucas. I thought John Lucas might have come and gotten this, actually, but he's decided it there not to go. And it was a, just an unfortunate clearance that dropped very, very nicely for Taylor, who rifled it into the net. And it was, he had room to do it. But then again, Villa always had room to do it, whatever they wanted to do in the game. The Villa players were the first onto the ball, and if you can just see the shot when he actually puts the ball in, there was a Leeds midfield player on the wrong side of him. I think it was Carlton Palmer, and really he's just got a free shot there with him behind him. And that happened all day. They were going beyond the Leeds midfield. We started with that sunny smile of the guy from Tobago, from Dwight York, and he finished the game with an even bigger smile, didn't he? Yeah, a wonderful strike by Dwight. They had room, all the two, Milosevic and York, had room to run at the defenders all day, and as you see, they're overcommitted and left York by himself. You see, they've got four defenders in the box against two, and they've not marked either of them. But when that move started, there were four defenders, and not one of them went to Milosevic early enough. I mean, it was just a case of letting him settle on the ball, let him dictate to them where he's going to put it, and then he's just rolled a ball, a ball back for Dwight York, and he's thumped it at the top of the net, and you've still got people around there who weren't marking and picking up. I mean, and, and it... Uh, People very quickly... The Leeds back four have had a bad day. Yeah, today. they had a bad day, Jack, and people very quickly, um, they forget the losers. But let's have one little ray of hope for your old club. The young boy who continues the Grey dynasty, he's following Dad Frank and Uncle Eddie, isn't he's he? He's done two beautiful things down the left-hand side here. Good skill, good, good attempt. He's, he's, he's sent Paul McGrath the wrong way, and he said it with his right foot. It was, I mean, it's not the place to play a ball there from that sort of an angle. I mean, you've either got to whop it across the goals so that if the, if the goalkeeper gets a hand to it, somebody's got a chance to knock it in. Mm. But he, he had done that twice, actually, in the game. He pulls it onto his right foot and then put it into the bottom corner. But and at least Andy Gray wanted to, to look for yeah, in the future. Yeah, he's, 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 he's in the second half, he had more room in the first 10 minutes because he played up front in the first half, didn't get much room, played out wide before, and then in the second half, when Brian Dean came on, that gave him more room to get the ball and do that. Uh, I think that is all easy in hindsight, but I'm sure, you know, had he started out there, he could have caused him more, more problems. OK, can I remind you, can I remind you that you have to play Aston Villa next Sunday in the FA Cup, Liverpool, John? Yeah, Aston Villa have been one of my favourite teams all season. Even when we actually beat them 2-0 at Villa Park and 3-0 at home, they played really well, particularly down there. So, uh, you know, I don't know whether it's a good thing that they've actually won. Maybe they'll be in Europe next year so they're relaxed, but maybe with already having one trophy under their belt. That's what you hope. That's what I hope. But with maybe one trophy under their belt, they can go out and play the type of football that you saw here today, which really we don't want. 
We yeah. want it to be in a nice, relaxed atmosphere. So let's hope they celebrate all week. All right. OK, thank you. Well, more reaction after the break and the goals from the top first division game. See you again in a moment. Most leading engineers are very secretive about what inspires them to build a better car in the future. And the engineers analyzing this new Accord have every reason to be secretive, because they didn't build the car. Honda did. The new Accord from Honda, as others are finding out, it's built without compromise. Air Canada's executive first sleeper seat is so comfortable that I can do my impression of a couch potato. Air Canada. It's a breath of fresh air. Lyonnais? Switch to a network where everyone gets inclusive minutes. Call 0800 80 10 80. The best love premium beer in France. Oof. Sorry. We apologize for the delay. What are you thinking about? Breakfast. Hmm. A McDonald's big breakfast. Oh, I'm starving, don't. With scrambled eggs, hot buttered muffin, sausage. Stop it. Hash browns. The McDonald's Big Breakfast is only 99p, but not for long. When you're on honeymoon, you don't expect the neighbours to turn up. Do you mind? What's the romance? Coronation Street, the cruise, tonight at 8. Three priceless goals for Aston Villa here today against Aston Villa in the Coca-Cola Cup final. Now Jim Rosenthal has the disappointed Leeds manager Howard Wilkinson with him. Yes, Howard, there's no sadder place than the loser's dressing room. Your team didn't do Leeds or yourself justice today. No, no, we, uh, no one likes to come to Wembley and lose. But uh, Villa deserved what they got today. Played very well and uh, really we didn't, uh, we didn't cause them problems at all. In fact, uh, you know, most of the time it caused ourselves problems. First goal and the last goal, square balls across the middle of the park. But we just didn't perform. Briefly, a bit of personal disappointment as well, Howard. Yeah, they say what a memorable day. They say enjoy it. They say uh, you know it doesn't last forever. It goes very quickly. None of those things happened today. 
It went very, very slowly. I didn't enjoy it, but it was memorable. Thanks for coming out and facing the music, Howard. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you. Yes, bad luck to Howard. Three priceless goals for Villa. And what could be priceless goals coming up now as Jim Rosenthal rounds up the weekend's top Division One games. Sunderland's hottest winning streak of the century. Oldham have different priorities. They make Sunderland sweat until the 82nd minute. And then a skillful and adventurous foray from fullback Martin Scott puts Sunderland four points clear and with a game in hand over Derby. And Derby could be sucked into the playoff swamp. They're beaten at Norwich where Jeremy Goss gets his first of the season midway through the second half. No happy returns for striker Ashley Ward or for Jim Smith his 1,000th league game as manager. Late drama at Selhurst Park after Fitzroy Simpson rattles Nigel Martin's crossbar. Deep into injury time, Palace are denied the points when referee Alan Wiley blows the final whistle just before Andy Roberts beats Knight in the Portsmouth goal. Shades of Clive Thomas and all that, another example of how the game could be improved by independent timekeeping but a common sense wouldn't hurt either. And anyone who left the valley early missed a late twist in the tail. Stoke looked to have ended a, a barren streak when their first half domination is awarded by Mike Sheeran's Chris Pedder. Then the game's turned upside down in the last seven minutes. Ian Clarkson's handball, spotted by the linesman, results in a penalty equaliser from Paul Mortimer. And now angry Stoke lose their concentration. Sean Newton, freed by Bowyer, produces a wonderful cross for substitute David White to squeeze out another priceless three points for Charlton. Their starting lineup costs just £75,000. They're trying to spend before the deadline. It's looking good for Sunderland. Ten points behind Derby five weeks ago. They now hold a four-point lead. Charlton were the only other winners in the top six. Still realistic playoff chances for half the first division. At the bottom, Watford's point against West Bromwich Albion isn't of much help. Luton are back in big trouble along with Oldham and Reading. Important wins for Sheffield United and Port Vale. And let me just remind you of our, non, of our live Champions League semi-final on Wednesday week. Holders Ajax and their match against Panathinaikos, 7.20 only on ITV. Today here at Wembley though, Aston Villa were put on the road to victory by the striker who they reckon couldn't score, Savo Milosevic the name, the butt of so many jokes uh, over this season, but not anymore. What a strike. And a final word from the lads here. Now really Villa performed and Leeds didn't, John. Yeah. Yeah, from the, the Villa had a 10 minute Leeds had a 10 minute spell early in the second half, but apart from that they were running it at all. No, Jack the same. Andy Townsend and Draper won the game. They won the midfield and that was it. OK, well, there we are. Aston Villa win the Coca-Cola Cup. They also equal Liverpool's record of five wins in the competition. Thanks for being with us. Bye-bye.